November 1st, 2024. Just hatched. Welcome to the world, little girl. We've got the old trusty pot lickers here. So if you ask me guys, this is the best time of year here. Look around here. See how luscious and green everything is. We've been getting a lot of rain here lately, but it gets cool up here in these mountains, which is one of the things that I wasn't expecting about Belize. But right now, this time of year, every night, it gets down to about 67, 68 degrees here in the mountains. And of course it warms back up during the day, but nighttime it stays cool, which is nice. Um, in the last probably three weeks, we've only had to run the air condition maybe two, maybe three times. Even during the day, it's only in the low 80s right now, but when you're in the shade, you know, here too in the mountains, there's a nice breeze, but yeah, just look at how lush and green everything is. When we first started this homestead, it was mostly just dirt all over here and just look at it now it's amazing to see it what it was and see what it is now it's been a lot of work I've learned a lot during this process I'm grateful I've been humbled in so many ways um, I can tell anybody who's thinking about moving to Belize thinking about getting property who wants a ton of property one thing I want you to keep in mind that I learned here Sometimes an acre and under is perfect. And the reason why that is, is this isn't like land in the States and Canada. This jungle, man, it grows so fast. That's the one thing that I fight with on a daily basis is how fast things grow here. It grows absolutely fast. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking about doing a homestead here, you are definitely going to be fighting with the vegetation and how fast it grows here in Belize. It grows so fast. So, hope you guys enjoyed this short intro. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is your first time watching. Thanks for tuning in. i uh, give a little bit of backdrop. We are two X-backs that moved here. Just a little over three years ago, we came here on vacation. We went back to the States, packed up everything we had, moved here, started looking for land, and we had to do everything from scratch. And we learned a lot along the way. So we started this channel to hopefully help people that are thinking about making the move to Belize. Um, I watched something the other day, and you know, Belize is a really small, not only country, but the population is small. So if you're watching this YouTube channel, you probably watched or are watching a lot of the other YouTube channels that are based about Belize, whether they're from realtors, whether they're from expats, um, what have you. You know, everybody has their own take on Belize. Everybody has their own perspective on Belize. Uh, you get a lot of people, you know, that have the YouTube channels that are just coming through Belize that are visiting and their perspective is going to be a lot different, of course, than if somebody was living here. So once again, um, I watch a lot of other people's content out there because it gives me an idea of, you know, how things are actually uh, evolving here in Belize, how things are starting to change since I've been here. You know, and one thing that I can tell you is that I've seen a big change here um, as far as people being scammed in Belize. Um, and of course, it's just like anywhere else. It happens in Belize, but it doesn't happen as often as, um, you know, other people actually may put it out there. Um, I watched something on YouTube the other day that, w in my opinion, was the furthest thing from the truth. And of course, you know, this is just what happened to one person. This was this person's experience. It's what happened to them here in Belize. And it's not the first time it's happened. But there was a lot of information that was in this video that, in my opinion, 
I think is BS. And I think when something bad happens to somebody here, it's in our human nature to completely down everything that has to do with Belize, um, down realtors, down locals, down expats, pull out the race cards, talk about how horrible everything that was happened to you, talk about this, just, you know, throw out everything that's, you know, horrible, how they're going to educate you so you don't make the same mistakes that they made and then try to sell their property during the videos. So, you know, if it rings a bell, it rings a bell. If it doesn't, I'm sure you'll run, ac run across one of these pages. Anyhow, that being said, after watching this video, you know, it just made me want to do a video on what I learned here in Belize and not just about what I learned here in Belize, but a lot of it's just common sense. A lot of it I learned growing up and, you know, I brought it with me. The first thing that I thought about when I see some of these videos is the first hard lesson that I learned in my life younger and this was in the States, it was in Florida, is buying my first vehicle. And I could have hired a mechanic for $50 to come check this vehicle out for me. But me being a penny pincher and knowing everything, and no, I'm just going to take this guy's word at face value, and he's selling a car, he sounds honest, he must be honest. So here's my hard-earned money, and give me the car. Well, that car ended up being a complete POS and didn't last me more than two weeks before it fell apart. And there was all kinds of stuff in the transmission fluid just to make sure that the transmission worked for a few more weeks. Anyways, that was a real hard but valuable lesson for me to learn. And what I noticed is in a lot of these other videos, a lot of people come here and they take that same kind of approach. Um, for instance, you know, one of the things that you're going to learn if you're buying here in Belize, and as an American, you get used to when you do a deal or something, or you buy a car out riding cash or what have you, that you're going to get the title right away, especially when it comes to houses and properties. I can tell you that that's not the average case here in Belize. There is people that after they buy a house or a piece of property, it is the normal to wait about 18 months for that title. Now, that being said, there are stories and there are cases that I've heard where people can grease the palms of people in the lands department and get their title a little bit faster. So what I'm going to kind of compare that to is, you know, uh, I remember back in the day when Disney World started that fast pass. And... So you buy your regular ticket and you know you have to wait in these long lines. But if you buy the fast pass, you can bypass those lines and you can get your stuff faster. So a lot of people choose to take that route because it's an option here. If you know the right people, you can buy the fast pass. But even in that instance, it doesn't work out for everybody. So it's always a risk. It just depends on the individual who's taking that risk. But if you're trying not to get scammed and believe, you should just do things the right way. For instance, and I got a whole list that I'm going to go down. So that one was the lands department. If you're looking at a plot of land here, or if you're looking at a place, it's your hard earned money. In my opinion, don't give your money away without researching first. We went to the lands department. We searched this plot that we're on. We actually got on Google. We went back almost 20 years ago. We're able to track this land for almost 20 years ago every time that it changed hands. You have to do your research. You can walk right into the lands department with a registration number and have them look it up. It might take you a couple hours, but like I said, back to buying the car without having a mechanic look at it. Why would you come here and do that? It makes no sense. It's common sense to protect yourself. Like I said, it's your hard-earned money. If you want to take somebody's word at face value, then you go ahead. Even most people here that are selling something, whether it's land, cars, 
on marketplace or whatever else are going to tell you not to do that and when i tell you that it's not just xbox you know that was you know that was the other thing in some of this information that this person was given out is that it was just happening to xbox and primarily white xbox you know and of course when somebody who is white something bad happens to them the first thing that a lot of people want to do is pull out the race card and let me tell you what that has not been my experience here i have experienced racism in the United States of America. And I'm not going to go into that or where I was when I experienced it, but I experienced real true racism in my life before. I have not experienced racism one time here in Belize. And to talk about the race card, you know, I'm ball head, blue eye, Caucasian, what people would call, you know, maybe colonizer, <laughs> what have you. Um, you would think if anybody would get you know, feel racism being done to them, it would be me. I have not had that happen here one time to me. And this is really why I wanted to do this video, not only to give you ideas of how not to be scammed in Belize, but also to don't believe everything that you see on these channels that are on YouTube. And you can take mine in the perspective that you want. Like I said, the information that I give you here on my platform is things that I've experienced, what I've done, things that have happened to me, and what my experience has been here in Belize. And like I said, Belize is small, people talk, word gets out, stories get around. Uh, oftentimes, what's said isn't what really what happened. So there's always, I like to say there's always three sides to every story. There's that person, there's mine, and then there's the truth. And somehow the truth is always going to find its way through. So yes, if you're coming here, the first thing that you want to do if you're looking for lands, search it yourself. Just don't take somebody's word for it. It's smart. If somebody has nothing to hide, they would point you in the right direction of doing that to begin with. It's just smart thinking. It's common sense. It's smart business. Research it for yourself. Don't buy something without researching it for yourself. Um, hire an attorney. We didn't have to hire an attorney because the people that we bought this property from had an attorney. But we researched and went and met and sat down with that attorney. We just didn't take it. Oh, here's a piece of paper with an attorney's name on it and a stamp. It must be legal. No, we researched that attorney. We made an appointment. We went to his office. We sat down. We talked to him. We got something in writing. We got his card. We took a picture. Just smart. You know, there, there are courts here that will protect you. If something bad happens, you just have to do it the right way. You know, that was the other thing that I saw in this information is that, you know, you're you're basically coming somewhere where nobody has any kind of protection. If you get robbed, scammed, or whatever, there's nobody here to help you. That is not the case. Belize has laws, they have magistrates, they have a Supreme Court, they they have courtrooms, they have officers, there's legal proceedings here. So it's you know <laughs> Anyways, so uh, another good thing to not get scammed, talk to the locals. If you're looking at buying something, talk to locals. We did that a lot. We hit the ground in this area and we talked to the locals. We asked if they knew the owners of this property and how they were in the community. Because like I said, every community is small. It's like everybody knows everybody. So we hit the ground and we asked so many people. And the response that we got wasn't, oh, nosy people was, man, y'all are actually smart. And the response that we got, we didn't really get any negative feedback from anybody on the people that we bought our property from. We got positive. Not only that, we met a lot of people in the area that we're living in. And that was a big opener for us not to get scammed and other things because now we have introduced ourselves to almost everybody in the community that we were looking to buy property from. And when I go out here, it's not like I'm not known or I don't know other people. I know tons of people in the area that I live. It's smart and it keeps you from getting scammed. Ask questions. Always ask questions. You can never ask enough questions. And if somebody gets tired of you asking questions about something, that should be a red flag. It's time to move on.
Ask for references and look up reviews. That's another big one. Everybody should have references, whether they're a land developer, they're a realtor, they are somebody who builds roads, they're somebody who builds houses, they're somebody that puts in plumbing. There is always should be references. And let me tell you what, I'm going to be honest with you. I never went with the first person. I never went with the first home builder that I went to. I never went with the first plumber that I talked to. I never went with the first electrician that I went to. And I never went with the first people that I asked about having things done around my property. I would just ask. And I would go around and just ask because, you know, one thing that I learned here is that if you let somebody work for you for a day or not, some people will automatically think that you have employed them. So you have to be careful with that. And that's going to bring me to another good point. There is nothing wrong in saying no. And there's also nothing wrong with not hiring somebody, especially if you know, with not hiring somebody to work on your property if they like to drink and they like to do drugs. There's nothing wrong with saying no. I had an older guy that was working on my property here as it was being cleared before anything was done here. I was just having the acre cleared. And he was an older guy and I wanted to give him basically a job for a week to clean the property because I had met him out here and he seemed like he was somebody that needed a job. And I finally had to hire somebody else because like I said, this was an older gentleman, but I needed it done within a time frame. So after the first week, I hired somebody else to come in to work with this gentleman to get it done in the time frame that I needed. This other guy worked one day and he called me on the phone and I'll never forget his words. He says, Mike, he says, this other guy that you have here working for you, he has perfected the art of looking busy while doing nothing. And he's got a stash of bottles on the other property. So the next day I come out here and I confront the issue and I just dealt with it. And you don't have to be nasty when you're dealing with something. It's okay to say no. It's okay to tell somebody, hey, you know, I gave you a shot and I wish you the best, but I can't have you working around my property, my family, my neighbors, or anything else if you're going to be under the influence of something. You can't be too nice. You can be nice, but you can't be too nice. And you definitely can't be afraid if you show any kind of fear. And like I said, this doesn't just apply to here. This applies to anywhere in life, even back in the States. If you show fear, you become a victim. You cannot show fear. You can say no without being nasty about it. You can set your boundaries without being nasty about it. And one thing that you have to do in Belize is you have to set your boundaries right out of the gate. You can't just let somebody do something for an amount of time to where they think it's okay and then set your boundaries. You could have blowback and it could end badly for you because a lot of people here have nothing to lose and you might piss somebody off, the wrong person, and if they drink... It could go any way, but that's why you stop it before it even starts. It's, you know, like I said, common sense. I know I keep looking down. I got a lot to talk about, so I got a lot of notes uh, written down here. Um, as far as being scammed and working with realtors, um, once again, this was something that I had to learn. I ran into a few and let me also say, not every realtor here in Belize is bad. There's a lot of good realtors here in Belize, but there's always a few that mess it up for everybody. And my warning flags were going up left and right over probably the first three people that I had contact with. Man, they were shysters. And I'll say it how it is. They were shysters. They were bait and switch. They were dishonest. And... They would answer. The only thing that they were concerned about is when you can put money down, when you can put money down. So if you run into people like that and your warning signs go off, do not continue to deal with them. Like I said, it's okay to say no. Do you know what? I don't feel comfortable. Something isn't vibing. Something doesn't seem right. Stories aren't adding up. I wish you the best. It's just not for me. And, you know, whatever. Part ways. Go your separate ways. What I learned here is that 
the local realtors are going to be a better lot. And like I said, this is just my opinion. A lot of people come here and they want to get with realtors that are from the bigger companies that are from the States or from whatever country they came from and they're selling property here. And that tends to make them feel a little bit more comfortable. And that's the biggest scam right there. That's where most people get scammed in their life is by the illusion of feeling comfortable because a company has a name and there's somebody from the country you're coming from selling something. That doesn't mean that they have your best interest at heart. That doesn't mean that they're your friend. That, mu that doesn't mean that you're not going to get scammed. Absolutely. What I've learned, the locals are the ones to go to. I mean, if you're shopping for a boat in Turkey, would you want to use an American yacht salesman that's in Turkey? Like I said, common sense. This is Belize. Um, and like I said, once again, in my opinion, you're going to want to stick with the locals. Plus, there's more that you can do if something does happen, if something does go wrong. If you're dealing with the local, you have more of an advantage to get something solved in a court of law rather than somebody who might get back on a plane and just leave the country. Because that, you know, that absolutely happens too. So keep that in mind. Don't fall, don't get scammed under the fake illusion of comfort. Because normally if it's comfortable, if it's too easy, come on, we all know saying, if it's too easy, it's too easy and it just ain't meant to be. Because nothing, nothing I've ever got in my life worth having came easy. I had to work for it including this property here that I show you guys all the time. We worked our butts off for this. It wasn't easy. We just didn't sign and you know, oh, we worked our butts off. We researched everything to make sure that we were safe. And yes, it can still happen. But what I'm saying is we went that extra mile to make sure that we were safe. And anybody coming over here needs to do that. You need to go the extra mile. You need to research things yourself. Don't leave it on somebody else. The people that leave it on other people are the people that have the money to do that. And what I mean is the millionaires that come over here to buy islands and rental properties and all that stuff, they have a whole crew that they send over here to do all that for them so they never have to do it. So if they do it and they're millionaires, why wouldn't you do it? You have less money than them and you work harder for your money. That's what I mean. I worked hard for our money. Me and my wife, we worked hard for our money. We're not just going to give it away to anybody and get scammed out of it. Um, you know, and it's all going to fall, like I said, it's all going to fall down to common sense here and beliefs about getting scammed. But don't, don't fall into the safety illusion. Don't do something here without researching it yourself. And another big thing is if you're going to buy something here, if you're having something built and you have to you know, put something on it or whatever, and you're dealing with the larger company and they don't take credit or debit cards, me, I walk away. One time here, I had to do a chargeback on a company in Belize. Believe it or not, I had to do a chargeback on a company because the product that they sold me wasn't the product that they stated it was going to be. And I did a chargeback on them and I won. And I hope that by me doing that here, they think twice before they do it to a local or anybody else coming here. But they had to learn a hard lesson on that. So it's good that if you're buying larger things here, use a credit card, use your debit card. Don't pay in cash because if you pay in cash, the chances of you ever getting that back are slim to none. Just like anywhere else, if you pay for large purchases in cash, your chances of getting it back are slim to none. So all that being said, if you're looking to come to Belize, if you're looking at buying property here, relocating here, snowbirding here, whatever you're looking to do here, and you're navigating the channels that are on YouTube, 
be careful of a lot of the stuff that you're going to hear on YouTube because a lot of it is not 100% accurate and a lot of it is only one person's perspective and it can be done out of anger. And like I said, if somebody had a horrible situation here on Belize, granted, not everybody, Belize is not for everybody. And some people have horrible things that happen to them here in Belize. They, you know, they basically get scammed, but a lot of them set themselves up for the scam. Don't set yourself up to be scammed. Don't be a victim. It's okay to say no. Just because you're in Belize, do you know how many people, I'm so tired of hearing people about how afraid they are to say anything because they're in Belize, because you're in Central America. Where I grew up, we were afraid to open our mouths. That was way back in the 80s and stuff, and it's no different anywhere else in the world. You got a voice, use it. Open your mouth. Don't be afraid to say no. Ask questions. Research. If something doesn't feel right, walk away from it. Not everybody that you meet in Belize is going to like you. Don't worry about everybody here trying to like you. Everybody here doesn't like me. Normally, it's because uh, I open my mouth and I'm quick to say something, but also because I put videos like that out here. I'm not here for everybody to like me. I'm here to put my perspective of what goes on in my life, what I deal with, my experiences out there. So if somebody else learns from it, that's all I care about is helping somebody else. It's honestly, all I care about. I'm not here to sell anything. So keep that in mind to keep yourself scammed. You, excuse me, to keep yourself from being scammed here in Belize, use common sense. And if you're coming over here, just use common sense research everything yourself even if somebody tells you that the color is red go research it yourself until you yourself know it's red and don't believe everything that you see on a lot of these channels a lot of these people out there put information out there because they're angry of what happened to them so you have to be careful of that Belize is a beautiful, beautiful place. And you're going to hear on a lot of these videos about how corrupt the Belizean government is. Of course it is. Every government. Name one government that isn't corrupt. Honestly. Name one government. One government that doesn't have corruption somewhere in it. Some local police force that doesn't have some corruption. It doesn't matter where you go. It's the same thing. Belize is a beautiful country. And it's growing. Belize is like 40 years, 50 years behind the U.S. right now. And for us, that's what's great about it. That's why we fell in love with Belize to begin with. But even we're only here for a short time. We're just here to experience this. And Belize is growing in leaps and bounds right now. And there's so many good, positive things that are happening in Belize and there's so many positive, grateful people here in Belize. Sometimes it just blows my mind. So once again, don't get scammed. Be smart. Do your research. Ask questions. Say no. Don't be afraid. And just meet people. The people that are meant for you will gravitate towards you. The people that are not meant for you will not. Belize is beautiful. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it's your first time watching and you like the content of this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share this with some of your friends. Be safe out there, everyone.